Okay, good morning to everyone joining us, or good afternoon, shall I say. Um, welcome to the webinar. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your lunch. So, I'm uh, Rick, I'm responsible for marketing at iRealize, and I'll be mostly in the background steering today's webinar. Uh, please do put any questions in the question and answer box, or if you're putting any comments or questions in the chat box, please be sure to change it to uh, a little drop down to everyone rather than just panelists, and then everyone can see your message. So a quick introduction to our two payroll experts today. Simon is RMD and he has extensive experience in HR and payroll, particularly in retail and supply chain. As you can see from his bio, he's worked with some of the largest companies in those areas. Simon recently hit the 15 year mark with iRealize and continues to lead the company forward as well as delivering successful projects. Also with us is Adrian Axel, and he's our principal consultant at iRealize and has in-depth knowledge and experience of supporting businesses across various sectors implementing payroll systems and improving payroll processes. He has been responsible for rolling out some ambitious and successful payroll projects for some of the country's largest businesses. So a couple of quick slides to introduce ourselves. Um, we'll get to our first poll of the day in a second, but uh, really we're just answering, do we have the experience to back up what we're talking about today? The short answer is yes. We have decades of experience working with well-known brands across sectors, including retail, leisure, financial services, um, logistics, and so on. We also work with HR, operations, finance, IT, to deliver everything from company-wide transformation and functional change programs to payroll health checks and assessments. And this slide illustrates some of the specifically payroll work that we've conducted and who we've done it for. Uh, we've worked with many established brands on a range of projects from end-to-end -end process reviews to health checks, uh, if anything catches your eye there, please let us know. Um, I'll put this slide up at the end during the Q&A so you can have a proper look at it. But we'll move swiftly on to our first poll. So the first poll simply asks, what stage of implementation are you at? So please do go ahead and let us know. We'll give that a few seconds more. Nearly everyone's answered, thank you. Okay, I'll end the poll there and share those results. Just have a quick look. As you can see, well, we've got uh, people at every single stage, it seems. Simon and Adrian, good morning. Yes. Any, any comments? Morning, morning, everybody. Yeah, that's uh, it's interesting. There's uh, um, a lot early on in terms of selecting providers. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in the um, as we go through things. Um, uh, and and a, a number of you in uh, in the in the depths of imp implementation. So uh, so it's good. Yeah, good selection. I say everyone's uh, everyone's underway as opposed to there's no one that not yet started. So that's, yes, that's, that's useful yeah. to to see. That's good insight okay. for, for this morning or this afternoon, sorry. Okay, well, we'll move swiftly on then and uh, look at Adrian. You can run us through what we're looking at today. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Rick. Uh, yeah, and good afternoon again, everybody. Um, so, um, so implementing new payroll um, system. So that can be that can be quite a daunting task, obviously. Um, I think if if you get it right, um, you can maximise the benefits you get. You can improve your the whole payroll cycle. It brings yourself benefits. It can bring um, your team, uh, your payroll team businesses uh, benefits, and obviously, and it can bring wider business uh, benefits to your business as well, and um, and and move your business forward for the future in terms of um, in terms of payroll. Um, but get it wrong, and then you've got disgruntled managers, employees, people within the business, and your reputation as a payroll as a payroll function will be tarnished. So, um, and and probably even worse is if you end up in a situation where you you actually have not, uh, something that's no re really no better than you've got today. So, in this session, what Simon and I are going to focus on is some of the key things that'll help ensure that your implementation is successful. And we'll give you some tips and techniques as to how to go about addressing those things. 
Um, it, it doesn't cover everything you need to run through for, and consider in terms of a payroll, in terms of payroll implementation. But it, and if we fo we're going to focus on four questions, and, and these are key questions, and, and they're key because in our experience in talking to and working with clients um, around pay about payroll payroll system implementations across the sectors that we work with, these these are things that are often missing or poorly addressed. Um, um, in in uh, implementations, and they end up leading to poor or, or failed implementations. Um, the other thing I'd say is that these tips that we've got apply to whether you're an in-house payroll, outsource payroll, or indeed if you're international. Um, so I think they they cover a um, you know, cover a breadth of uh, types of payroll setups that you've got. So so four things we'll look at: what's wrong with today. Who's involved? Uh, how do I choose the right supplier? Um, what does the future look like? Um, and um, and to start us off and kick us off, I'll hand over to Simon to pick up on the first of those. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks. And yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for taking the time to join us today. So yeah, I'm going to start with what's wrong today. Um, and uh, if I had a pound for every time uh, a client said to me, we don't need to worry about, you know, what we do today. We just need to focus on the, on the future. I'd be a very uh, wealthy person because I think, uh, you know, the danger whenever you're kind of embarking on implementation is everyone gets very excited about the future. They think about, you know, kind of what it's going to look like and almost they don't think they need to really worry about uh, what happens today because it's all about, you know, what's changing. And yes, you need to think about what that future looks like but it's so important that you actually spend some time up front really getting underneath what happens today and I think the importance of that is that again lots of people will reference they have documentation saying you know what the processes are uh, but actually you really need to get underneath what actually happens not what's supposed to happen um, and I'll give you a really good example actually of, of a client we worked with where um, again we got resistance to do this work up front but actually because we did this um mapping what happens today we identified a kind of pdf document that people used and referenced all of the time and actually if we hadn't identified that pdf document as part of that process then it wouldn't have been taken into account in the overall system design so we would have only found it once we'd gone live if we hadn't done that up from a piece of work so it's really important that you spend time uh, getting underneath what happens today and also as it says here about the payroll network it's really important understanding where the system sits in this overall sort of systems and data infrastructure again we'll often reference that in many respects the payroll system is kind of the easy part in that sort of diagram it's understanding kind of you know the interfaces the interactions you have with you know different systems and different functions and we'll talk a bit more about that as we go through so firstly really important to understand uh, what happens today then what that allows you to do is then start to overlay uh, the issues so start to identify you know what uh, the different issues are with what happens today and you'll find that as you kind of undertake this process with the team to start pulling together um, and understand uh, the processes that's when people will start to just reference you know issues and some of them will be throwaway comments that will be hugely powerful um, just to start to capture what all these issues are um, some of them will just be you know opinions and to a degree that's fine you know people have opinions of of what uh, the problems are but again just capture them all just to understand all of those issues and you'll probably end up with a massive list of you know of hundreds of issues is 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 normally quite common Adrian we see yeah, lots, of, lots of big spreadsheets of issues that, that come up the important thing is once you've got those issues that you actually then start to do what we reference as the kind of root cause analysis. So getting really underneath those issues and understand you know, what the heart of the, of the problem is with the issue, what's driving it. And we often uh, undertake a, a technique that we re reference as the kind of five whys. Um, so you'll start to say to someone, you know, well, why is that an issue? And then potentially they'll give you an answer and you say, well, you know, why is that? And actually, if you start sort of delving deeper and deeper and asking those five whys, you'll really get to 
uh, you know, what the root cause is and what's driving it. And again, another really good example is, you know, we had another client who had lots of operations across lots of different um, sites. And there was a real data accuracy um, issue on kind of employee data around, you know, kind of cost codes and pay types, that type of thing. Um, and it was coming out from a kind of variety of different sources as a common issue. And actually, the danger again was that there was a, it was very quick to jump to an assumption of, of what was driving that. But actually, when we delved deeper and we got to the root cause, we found it was just because of a single document was the single point of failure. And that was what was driving the problem. So really important that you get behind what those issues are and you understand the root causes. So my top tips on the back of that would be number one to say capture the actual processes. So really understand what is happening, not what you think is happening. And then importantly, work through those root causes to understand you know, what's driving the problem. OK, hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's move on to the next one, then, which is around who's involved. So again, there's always a, a risk here that there can be lots of assumptions are made around, uh, you know, who's involved. Um, and actually, it's important to take a little bit of time out to think about the different stakeholders, or at least in the first instance, the kind of groups of teams that are impacted. And again, there's often an assumption that, you know, when you're talking about a payroll system that, well, it's, you know, the payroll team that are impacted or it's just HR that's impacted. But actually, obviously, everyone gets a pay slip, everyone's paid. So every individual is impacted to a varying degree. But also you might have you know, other functions, you know, finance, pensions team, some of the exec, you know, whoever it might be. You need to just think about, you know, what those kind of groups of stakeholders are. But once you start to identify those groups, then think about, you know, the individuals within each of those groups. Is it, you know, store managers or is it that you need to list by individual name, you know, Fred Bloggs, whoever it might be. But also start to think a little bit about, um, you know, where they're at uh, on the journey of, of all of this. You know, are they resistant to the change because they just don't believe in it and don't think it should be happening? Or actually, are they really supportive of it because, you know, they've, been crying out for a new payroll system for for ages so think a bit about you know where they're at on the journey because that will allow you to then think about how you're going to communicate to them and um, but also who's going to be responsible for that communication and what principles you might apply for communicating those to those people because again if you think about you know where those people are based and how easily you can communicate to them you can start to sort of structure uh, what your communication principles might be then importantly, as it says there in the middle, you need to think about how those individuals are impacted. So it might only be very minor, but you know, to a degree they're going to be impacted. So you can think a little bit about a sort of statement of how they're actually uh, impacted. So, you know, kind of the difference from uh, what they do today to what they're going to do in the, in the future. Think about what the effect of that change might be. Um, and that will obviously drive out again how you need to think about how you involve them in this. And then, you know, from a, when they're involved, think about how that impacts the overall plan. So are they going to need to be, you know, just communicated and told about this? Or actually, are they going to have to be you know, trained on a different process or a different interaction they're going to have? So it's really important that you think about, uh, you know, each of those stages. Now we'll reference all of this as business readiness is what we refer to this as. Um, and on the next slide, you can just see it breaks down kind of the different um, elements of what we class as business readiness. Um, you know, ultimately what you're doing with business readiness is you are readying the business for the change that is about to take place. So you're thinking, you know, what's your overall uh, approach to this from a sort of you know overall high level strategy from a business readiness but then as I say you're thinking about you know the stakeholders who are impacted the community the way you're going to need to communicate to them the impact on them from the, a role perspective from their day-to-day -day, you know um, interaction with you as a function then as I say thinking about are they going to need to be trained what needs to be thought about from a go live perspective are they going to need to be involved beforehand to perhaps help from a user acceptance testing perspective and then also importantly there as it says hypercare 
actually once you've gone live are they going to need some level of ongoing support to ensure that you know they've really understood and the the, the change has been embedded so my top tip on the back of this would just be you know, thinking across all areas the impact on all stakeholders at whatever level to ensure that they're all considered and they're all being taken on the journey with you okay so i'll hand over to you adrian i think next yeah, great i think i think that's um really useful in terms of uh, that getting the get, understanding all your stakeholders understanding that your the, the network that you got that you referred to in your first slide of all the interactions that payroll has around the business with all the different stakeholders um, both from a people point of view and actually a little bit from a from a systems point of view capturing those issues understanding what those issues are um, but but getting that understanding of all the all the all the uh, all the people around the business who who are, who are involved and engaged with payroll ultimately if it's pay so you're is every employee in the business so being absolutely clear as to how you're going to engage and manage those different stakeholders is really really important yeah and often gets overlooked <laughs> it often it does it does often get overlooked yes. uh, and as you say the, the the piece around um uh, um understanding current the current situation what's going on you can really use that to, to engage with those various various people various functions that you work with as a payroll team yeah. and actually get them involved and engaged early on in terms of in terms of the project get their input get to understand what what's uh, what their problems and issues are and it relates a little bit to what i'm going to talk about now and i'm going to talk about um how we choose the right right supplier um it's something that clearly happens relatively early on in the in the whole in the whole process if once you've made your decision it's not the first thing you've got to make the decision you're going to change your payroll and that can it can, brings with itself uh, challenges in terms of getting that piece over the line um but it's um but it's still re relatively early it's really really important though clearly it's not something that you that, that should be rushed um it's pay, changing payroll is not something that exec boards will do often and with you won't get the chance to do it very often so make that decision uh, so making that decision isn't easy um boards have other priorities and payroll isn't necessarily top of the list um so make sure you you can make the most of that um when you do get that opportunity and choosing the right supplier and being clear about what you need from that that supplier um as as a business is is really important so the first point we make in terms of this sort of flow of, of, of going about choosing the supplier is, is understanding requirements. You want to know what your current issues are and look to resolve those, as Simon's referred to earlier. Um, and um, so, um, so yeah, the, one of the things you need to do in this in terms of those requirements is to engage and involve uh, people, uh, the, the, the functions that you work with, with HR, finance, pensions, um, uh, benefits, whoever those teams are, get them get them involved in um, helping you to define the requirements of the new payroll because you want to fix the business problems, not just your payroll team's problems, um, and look to the, for for the opportunities there. So having those requirements to understand what all the, uh, those requirements are allows you then, in terms of the conversations with the uh, with uh, with the uh, um, with potential suppliers to actually give them give them uh, an, a, a clear indication of what your what your requirements are um, how much of this process these five steps you go through is a little bit dependent on on uh, on a number of things but we would enc encourage everybody to do what we call a, a request for information that that's that second stage um it it as i say might not be uh, necessary for everybody but it is a it is an important one to get to understand what's out there in the marketplace um gives you an opportunity to go out widely to ask for uh for input show an interest in the fact you are looking to change your your, your payroll system um and get uh, and get lots of lots of what can be really useful useful information across a wide breadth of, uh, of, of potential uh, potential suppliers um, using your your requirements as the first as a as a, a means of, of engaging with them um, 
is uh, is 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 in that first early stage is quite important as well to start to indicate what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, so um, so it, it, you know it might be that uh, you've got examples of, of of wanting to ensure that system delivers average holiday pay for you because you're currently calculating it, or you've got leave uh, how you manage family leave is a problem, or you want digital communications with your employees, those sorts of things. So that might uh, that um, talking to them at the at an early stage about this can be really uh, can be really helpful in start starting to think look at what uh, what the different uh, uh, potential suppliers will will do for you. Um, so um, there's the, the next stage we we, we look at is a um, is a request for a, for a proposal from from clients. So having got a, a looked at those RFIs, you can make a decision out of that as to who you want to take forward um, and look and 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 talk to in in more detail. Look at in more detail. So then you go through quite a it's a bit it's a more detailed process of actually saying here's my requirements in 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 detail. And you it, you add to that a requirement for those um, those suppliers to feed back with you back to you implement information about costs um, uh, and, and and other information about I, I we would really really suggest you focus on on key things that you have as a set of requirements so focus on those key things don't ask for everything there's no point in asking asking clients to um, for um, uh, um, uh, for do for how they for do for payroll calculations um, how they do gross to net for example is a bit irrelevant because they're a payroll provider but what is it that you really really need um, so understanding what um, and the other aspect coming back to business readiness and site and, and, and the piece Simon was talking about earlier was understanding what they will do what will the, what will those suppliers do to support you in terms of your change and your plan for change what role will they play try to get that start getting that out early early on in terms of those uh, those rfps um because those types of things can be the, the the decision maker for you can help you with those decisions about who you who you want to work with and who you don't um you need to develop off the back of those rfps what how you're going to score and assess those clients um against your key requirements and against the things that you ask them ask them for um and remember as i say it's not it's not it's not just what what you want it's what um, other 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 teams want uh, within within the business so if you're working closely with hr if hr have got a number of problems you're trying to help fix those for them in terms of for, for payroll then um, then get them involved in that uh, how you're uh, in assessing those those requirements and scoring if you like those uh, those those responses um, when you get to the it, it's quite important to remember that that high scoring vendor is not necessarily the one you the, the right one for you so coming back to this this the sort of softer things if you like um, around how can can you work with them do they seem flexible in terms of the way they approach things do they seem to have in terms of an implementation approach and the way they go about things something that is more engaging than just saying well you give us your information we put it into a system um, and then we and then we just uh, run some some stuff for you and you decide whether you we're, we're ready to go uh, in a very very simplistic um, approach um, so um, the other thing is to think about the people that you're going to be working with you'll get the salesman in terms of in initially coming to you and talking to you salesmen are salesmen they're not the implementers who are people who are going to put the system in for you um, and then certainly not your day-to-day -day account manager so actually start work uh, start uh, get, make sure you have conversations with those guys as well within anybody you're looking to do um, from this short list if you like that you've got um, get references from reference sites. Go out and 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 make sure those reference sites are comparable to your business in terms of their types of business, the types of employees they have, the types of terms that they have within their business, um, um, and and go and visit them and talk to those reference sites. Don't just try, just don't try and do it just by call. By call. Um, um, I think I think the other thing to be to make sure you do is to keep a keep a second up your sleeve. So if you make a decision 
based upon the scoring and the feedback, et cetera, and, the, and how you feel about a particular, make sure you've also got who's, going, who's second in that, in that um, the first, whoever's first, it might not work out with them. So decide who's, who's a second. Um, um, and, and I think it's, it's do those assessments and making that decision, as I say, is, should be a cross-functional decision, not just you as payroll. Payroll needs to work for, for the business. So think about who are those, who are those colleagues across the business you're going to work with to make this, make this decision. Um, and I don't know whether you've got any thoughts, Simon, on all of that. Well, no, I was just going to say about your the point around talk to the account managers, not the salesman, I think is is really important because I think we see that time and time again, that as you say, no disrespect to salesmen, but they just want to ultimately get the sale. And, you know, once they've sold, they'll they'll move on. So actually, especially if you say, for example, you move to an outsource service and you want to understand, you know, who are the people that are actually going to be processing the payroll for you? If they're the people you're going to be interacting with on a regular basis, it's really important to, uh, you know, get some visibility, get some interaction with them to ensure that you feel comfortable working with them. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And then I think the other point you made around the role that this, the supplier is going to do in all of this, I think, you know, again, there's always a danger that people assume that, well, because they're, you know, there's going to be a, a software supplier, they're going to do everything. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll sort the whole thing. But unfortunately, again, you know, I think 99% of the time, they're ultimately there just to implement their software they won't you know want to get involved in thinking about what the impact is on you and your people and your, your business yeah yeah we see it time and time again it's it's a, there's an expectation from the, the 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 buyer if you like that the supplier is going to sort everything out um and and we've talked right at the beginning we talked about the network and the impact of pay of a payroll changing that payroll system in the middle um actually potentially has an imp impacts or relationships and dependencies on an all, all sorts of other things around the business and your supplier won't get to grips with that your your new supplier won't get to grips with that and won't think about it in, as part of their implementation so yeah. it's really really important that you as you as the the buyer get to get to grips with that yourself understand all of those things and uh, and are able to put together a, a change plan internally that you're happy with and that that then you can say to you to the new supplier this is how we're going to change this business and move this this in move this forward that you you've got your part to play you, let's agree what that is but actually, actually, we know the problems and issues we have. We know the relationships we have with the with the various functions, and we're engaging with the business on an ongoing basis. Yeah. Um, so I need to do my 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 two tips so what's, what's your out tip? of what my tips, tips out of that. So I've got two tips out there. Uh, so first of all, yeah, first of all, we talked about remember that supplier is not going to change your business. So be clear as as to what they will do. And, and and put together your, your business change plans to say um, and also be specific clear and specific about your requirements of the system um, so that you get the best solution out of, out of out of the supplier but think about what's important to you and what's relevant for what's really important for you as a business that makes you if you like a, a maybe a bit more unique from from other from uh, other other customers What's what's unique about your business that you need to, to solve? What the those important things, um, and uh, the generics are as I say around payroll and what payroll do, does don't, aren't particularly relevant in making a choice of one one supplier from another. Okay, I'll hand back to you, Simon. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the question that says, what does the future look like? Um, so vision-led versus problem-led. Uh, you're probably sitting there thinking, what's it going on about now? Um, so uh, really, this, this stems from um, when we talk to people, we will often, when someone's about to embark on a change, we'll try and help them kind of categorise. Are they coming at it from a vision-led perspective? Or a problem-led perspective. So ultimately, you know, vision are they trying to actually drive a step change 
problem is it about you know sort of fixing something you know very specific and problem led works really well when you're perhaps trying to address you know a process issue or a timing issue or you know some sort of tweaks and changes you want to make but actually you know, the reason for referencing this is it's really important when you're embarking on a uh, payroll implementation that you do come from a vision led perspective because what you don't want to do unless you know, there are exceptions unless there is something that is very much driving it you don't want to do what we would class as a kind of lift and shift so you are just doing everything you do today but potentially on a new piece of software why would you want to do that actually this is your opportunity to really change and transform the way payroll operates within the business so it's a, a great way of really looking at it from a different angle so therefore it's really important you do take look at it from a vision perspective and Adrian will come on to in a minute the kind of way you can you think about that vision and it doesn't mean you don't look as it says here on the left hand side when it sort of says the as is analysis still means you're going to look at understanding you know what you do today what your issues are it's just that you're also coming at it from a okay so what do we want to design what do we you know what are some of the ideas we want to change moving forward so that you can real as i say undertake a real um step change now, also as part of that, we'll also talk about it from a, an overall operating model perspective. So actually, it's really important to think of your overall operating model. So this might be your, you know, your payroll operating model. You might want to go slightly broader and look at it from a, you know, functions. If you sit with an HR or finance, you know, what is your overall operating model going to be? Because as you can see from this diagram, the danger is that you look at it you just look at that one element so you can see technology there at the bottom you're changing that you know one piece of technology but actually all of these different elements of the operating model you know interact and are linked to one another we'll often you know reference this as as the kind of links between the different elements as almost as elastic so you know if one piece moves then the other bit will need to move with it so as you can see here things like you know the process being at the heart of that operating model actually you know the heart of what you're doing will be the processes and they will ultimately change or actually from again a vision perspective you want them to change you want to look at ways you can improve those processes and really again drive some step change within the function but also you know what's the impact going to be on the people potentially on the geography because you know if you're outsourcing perhaps the way certain things are done are going to be done in a different you know location so you need to think about that kind of geography of where things are done and again from a kind of organizational perspective what that means in terms of who has responsibility for what so it's really important you think of that overall operating model but also it's really important you think about that framework that sits around it so actually you think about sort of what you know controls and measures so you know you've probably heard of adrian and ian talk previously about kind of kpis think about what those kind of key performance indicators are going to be but also as you will have seen on the business readiness slide we had at the bottom there talking about benefits realization again it's a really great way of thinking about how you're going to measure ultimately once this is implemented are the benefits being realized because you will have had a business case um, that you're ultimately trying to achieve as part of this implementation. So you need to think about moving forwards, how you're going to measure that and ensure those benefits are being you know, achieved and optimised as part of the overall implementation. So it's just really important to, as I say, think of that overall operating model and that overall vision you're trying to achieve. So from a tip perspective, um, for me, it is around taking a vision led approach so that you are on a path to those longer term objectives. You're really thinking about what long term objectives you are trying to achieve as part of this overall implementation. Anything, Adrian, you wanted to add to that? You're muted, Adrian. I'll unmute myself before I start talking. <laughs> I think the control framework around around uh, the operating model is is really 
really important, uh, particularly from a payroll perspective. In terms of ensuring compliance and uh, et cetera within, within payroll, unless you've got that, those controls in place, and then it's not just about a process and somebody, do, somebody doing tick boxes, that it's the systems and the processes and the teams that you've, that you've got ensuring you've got uh, ensuring you've got compliance in the right areas um is is uh, is is really important so pulling pulling that together and looking at that um that sort of all aspects of that operating model can really help when you're when you're looking at uh, when you're looking at power, payroll and changing payroll setup okay so that nicely leads on to your bit about it does how you actually design that future yes so let's yeah let's talk about that Let's talk about our future. What uh, sort of, how do I how do I pull together a vision? It's a, um, uh, and there's there's I, I, I come a, a little bit back again to um, to understanding what it is you're trying to to achieve. So start with what the key questions are around. What do I want? Uh, what is the biggest need? What do I want to need in payroll? Um, um, what would I like to do for business? What, what, and what do that they want with, again within HR finance, the employees? What what are the benefits and measures of success I'm going to have out of out of what I'm doing? So uh, so think about for a vision from ask, answering some key questions around around what you're trying to achieve, why you're trying to achieve it, what you think it's going to going to look like a little bit in the future, and and the benefits you're going to get out of it. And how you're going to determine you've got there, because when you uh, in looking at that and thinking about that, um, you, it uh, it will really help you in terms of in terms of design, thinking about that what that future vision should look like. Um, go back again to what we talked about earlier, what Simon talked about earlier, some of those root causes, what the issues should, you've got today, um, where a change is required, what things do we need to make, do we need to improve and change um, uh, to to get us to work to where we want to be? Um, getting the getting the wider business involved in this area, I think, is really really important. Um, pay, payroll can often be seen as a as a as that 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 function that's um, that does a fantastic job pay, making sure everybody's paid each month, but isn't isn't in that sense, if, if I can put it this way, a core part of the business. HR is finances, but payroll is something so slightly off, slightly off to the side. Actually, this is the this is this is where you can show that actually pay, payroll can play a, it looks after all the costs, some of the key costs within the business, and therefore can um, can be um, uh, it is really important. We, in terms of in terms of designing that future and looking at what that future is, one of the techniques we use is something called design principles. Design principles are um, are about what you're trying to achieve. It's, it enables you to paint a little bit of a picture um, through a sheer series of sort of short descriptions about what good looks like for you going going forward. Um, it doesn't necessarily it doesn't look at the how. It looks more about the what. Um, but I think the other thing is not to go too wild in terms of these design principles. I've seen people go very, very fancy with, with design principles. You have to think design principles should also be constraints. You can't go this way or that way in terms of what you're trying to achieve. We've got a limit in terms of the amount of money we can spend. We've got, we've got uh, um, limits in terms, of, uh, in terms of direction we can take. Um, you should be looking a little bit at where the business is going, what the business is trying to achieve and do for you, for, 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 for designing some of these things. And again, get your colleagues involved in terms of, in terms of looking at those. Um, so, so that's the, those design principles. Um, uh, is a, it, it, are, it can be used in quite a powerful way because they are the types of things. If you get a, a nice list of design principles, that's not too long, relatively punchy, you can take that to your senior stakeholders and say, look, this is this is what in this payroll implementation, we're looking to deliver these things in terms of our, our uh, and our principles are around guiding what we're going to do. These are the types of uh, principles we're going to apply. Um, uh, it's um, the, one of the one of the things you can then do with the design principles. And I'll show you a bit of an example in a minute. Um, is 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 um, coming back to the issues that we talked about is is actually do a bit of a, a, um, um, a 
solving those problems and issues that you've got, you can apply use design principles together with issues that you've, you've identified to create something called change ide ideas for change, change ideas. These are, these are really things that, um, um, that are describing the way that the problems you've got today could be fixed and could be resolved. And you'll get out of that where, uh, where you've, where, um, um, a, a variety of different uh, uh, different uh, solutions potentially, um, depending on on how how um, uh, depending on what um, how how wide you think about what what you could do and how you could solve problems um, that will um, can can help you in terms of defining what you want and need from a payroll payroll system. Um, uh, do you show the benefits, the features of those of those changes? Um, and actually some of the challenges in getting there, but they'll help you choose and, 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 and thinking about, about what changes are, are could, what the changes could do to your business and what, uh, what will, what they'll do in terms of helping and supporting what you're trying to get to. Um, so you might have options out of those. Um, it starts, you starts you thinking, uh, about the, the next steps for delivery and, 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 and focusing on those those critical design design principles that you're applying, um, it starts you to show what what the system implementation can do, um, but also potentially what it's not going to do for you. To bring that to life a little bit on the on the next slide, um, I've got uh, I've used an example of, of Tesla, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll I'll talk a little bit about payroll as well. So. To illustrate sort of a design principle and change ideas, you've got and how they work together. You've got some some pieces here around Tesla and what what Tesla um, did for their uh, well what might have done. I think we've we've a little bit applied that technique to what te Tesla where well, they did it openly uh, or in, in knowing that that's why they were doing this is the this is the types of things they did. so they'd have they'd have thought about what do they want out of their out of their car they'd have. They'd have absolutely thought about it. We want it to be technology rich. We want to have um, a summon. And then when then when they work through the change idea, so how are we going to make our car technology rich? What does it look like? What does it, what does it, what does it need to do? Well, then they then they sort of sort of come up with the things that they they came up with in terms of summon the car, auto park, lane change, and all that type of thing start to come into that technology rich. So you start to see how the change ideas come out of a a design principle that says what we what, what we want out of what we're trying to deliver. Apply that a little bit for you to payroll, make it a little bit more. So you might have a design principle, for example, that says um, I want to uh, engage with all employees in the business digitally. That might be your change. Uh, that might be your, your your design principle, and then your change ideas coming out of that are clearly things like I want online pay, pay documents, so uh, everything should be online and and indeed, whenever a query or question is raised from an employee, I want that to be done online as well. I want the employees to be able to engage with me digitally in that perspective. But also you might have a, 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 a design principle that's a bit of a constraint that says, I don't want to actually pay for any bespoking of the payroll system I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to implement. So that might mean that as a as a as a change idea, you end up with things around right. How am I going to automate what I what I've the data that I've got internally that I use within payroll, so I can upload it automatically to the payroll system? Um, or you have um, 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 some some current bespoking requirements that you have on your current payroll system. It's right. At, look at those those bespoking that you currently do. Right. How am I going to how am I going to resolve those? What am I going to do to actually help uh, ensure that I can um, uh, um, d deliver an, a, a payroll system that doesn't need bespoking? And that can, uh, I'm sure a number of you realize that can lead to problems and issues bespoke in the payroll system um, going forward. Okay, top tips out of that, a couple of, couple of top tips um, is, um, Creating those design principles and agreeing them across your, your key stakeholders can be a really powerful way of describing what it is that you're looking to achieve in terms of your and the way and the constraints or the and the ways you're going to do that for, for your payroll implementation. And then think about using change ideas to actually try to try to understand how you might fix some of the problems you've got, because it won't all be about the system. 
the change change ideas can start to show you actually I need to make changes here and here within the business to actually deliver the changes that I uh, successfully deliver those changes. I think the change ideas, but Adrian, is, is hugely powerful, again, as a way of, you know, invariably you will come up with lots of different, you know, ideas. And some of them might seem, you know, quite far-fetched or will need to be kind of further down the line. But again, when you're kind of developing that vision, it allows you to just think about ultimately, you know, where you want to get to. And you might come up with some change ideas that you go, actually, it's too far fetched. We're never going to be able to, yeah. you know, we're going to be able to yeah. achieve that. But the whole point is you're trying to just come up with these different ideas. And, you know, Angel, you made the point about how payroll is sometimes, you know, thought as, well, I've, I've often heard it called as a bit like the wheels on the bus, you know, that until there's kind of a puncture, or, then no one sort of worries about it kind of thing. But actually, if, you, if part of the principle is you want to raise the profile of payroll within the business, here's a great opportunity to do it. And if you have that as a principle, and then you think about, okay, so sort of from a change idea perspective, how are we going to do that? Do we want to get, you know, a seat at the board or do we want to make sure there's regular representation? Actually, that allows you to kind of think about it, you know, in a much more broader and bigger sense. So I think they're, they're really powerful and a, and a payroll implementation is a great opportunity to do it. Right. Thanks, Simon. Rick. Okay, hi. Um, okay, so I'm going to launch the second poll, uh, which you can see there. So I'll leave that up there for a while. Which of our tips has resonated with you today? So please have a read through those and tick which ones are not necessarily ones that you've used in your implementation. There might be ones that have been missing from your implementation. So um, yeah, please let us know which of those tips and please select more than one if there is more than one. Um, and while people are doing that, I was going to sort of say that perhaps one of the key takeaways from today is that a payroll Im implementation is so much more than just a, an implementation. It's a, a huge end-to-end -end process, and it's not just a vendor selection, and it's not just an implementation. It's, it's everything that wraps around that, and I think that's sort of our, our area of expertise, is, is that sort of wrapper. Uh, we call it bridging the gap, I think, at times. That's a term that we've used as well, isn't it? Yeah, and certainly I think with the first time we, we got involved in in payroll many, many years ago, uh, when we started working with Argos was actually because, you know, I'm sure they won't mind me saying that they initially thought that the supplier would kind of do everything for them. But actually the supplier was there just to implement the software. They weren't there to think about what that meant from a, a, a process perspective or actually even what was needed from a requirements perspective so actually they needed some upfront support to give them that clarity and direction they needed because I think you know payroll systems you won't potentially change a payroll system for you know maybe 10-15 years sort of thing so actually the chances are when this comes around it is potentially an area of kind of discomfort for people because it's not something they would have necessarily experienced before. So it's only natural that you're going to need support and guidance along the way. Okay, let me end that poll and share the results there. Um, Simon and Adrian, what do you think? 100% capture the actual processes. Yeah. Okay, that's, 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 that's good. That's great, see, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, next? and vision led vision led that's really use that's really interesting that's great that's great that um I don't, it'd be inter interesting to understand where, where that comes out out from in terms of in terms of people's uh, reason for ticking that box i i think it's definitely from our perspective it's something that does get does get missed it tends to be a Changing your payroll system, I've 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 seen quite often is I've got a problem, I just need to fix it in my in my payroll. My payroll is is going out of um, uh, it's going out of support. I need to change my payroll system. It's a an issue that I need to resolve, as opposed to taking an opportunity to really uh, really maximise that opportunity and a vision led thinking about what you really want in those longer term future is a, a really really great way to do that, as we've described. And that's good. That is good. That's 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 really really yeah. interesting, actually. Okay. Um, I'll stop sharing that. We'll move on to Q and A. Um, so yeah, we'll do a quick Q. We've had some questions come in. If anybody has any other uh, questions, please do drop them in the uh, chat uh, or comment box. 
And yes, if you were one of the people that clicked vision led approach, we'd love to see your comment in there as well as to why. Um, just, yeah, we've got a few questions. So we'll go through these very quickly. First one uh, is from Mia. She says, we have a really small payroll team. How can they do all of this whilst they're running payroll? Uh, well, you shouldn't. I suppose. Yeah, no, no, no I'd, I'd agree. That, really. yeah. uh, I think, you know, this is, this is the danger, actually, is that, you know, there is an assumption that this can be done alongside the day job. And the reality, it, it can't, or it can't be done well alongside the day job. Yes, you need to, you know, you need to input and you need to be involved, but you are going to need some, and I'm not saying external yes i'd love to say we, we can help but it's about having other roles in support so you need other you know uh representations you know, whether it be a project manager or a you know business analyst who's going to help you kind of go through these steps and as i say we'll need to get your input into it but you can't be expected to do it and run the payroll i think is that do you agree, Adrian? Yeah, I, I think so. I think the uh, the challenge we sometimes see is is, is sort of under pitching the change, um, and and not asking for for everything that you need to actually deliver this change, um, and not recognising that it is actually a, a big step a big step to take. It can't be done by the um, by the by the payroll team. Um, and it doesn't. It doesn't just happen. we have seen in payroll as well. It happens in other areas of the business where functions will decide they want to make some big changes and try and go about it themselves. It yeah. do, it does need it. Do, it does need the right support and and uh, uh, and and, uh, and 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 bodies. It needs people in in helping and to sort that out with the relevant skills. Okay. Um, good question. We know that applies to you, Elaine. Yes, as you say, it's a really good, a good example, isn't it? Okay. Um, see, Holly says uh, you mentioned hypercare. How long does this run for, and who needs to be involved? Do you want to start, there, Adrian? Yeah. Uh, yes. It. Uh, how long? How long it runs for is um, it, it should run for. I would suggest at least a couple of payroll periods. You should um, uh, the, the 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 people involved are are um, uh, think about it as 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 your payroll team, or indeed, if your change is, for example, needing needing HR changes is needed changes to HR to be done or finance to be done, then. Each of those each of those areas will need need support. So it might be coming back again to we've got a project manager, I've got a business analyst. So those those guys will be helping, uh, supporting. Make sure the client, the supplier doesn't uh, doesn't um, uh, sorry the supplier doesn't um, get rid of their implementation team the day after they've gone live. Make sure that they've got a, 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 a number of people there. To pick up any issues and problems that you might have in those over those first couple of payroll runs, you can wind wind the team down. So and then internally, as I say, think about internally for the whatever change you, program you put together, whatever that those changes are. Think about who you might need to support the various the ch changes that you've done in various parts of the business as a result of the new payroll going in. Um, so um, so yeah, oh, man. I, it, it can be quite a. It can end up being quite a few people involved, but it's all. It's a little bit about keeping the project people from the project, if you like, including the the, the, the supplier involved for a period of time after you've initially gone live. Well, because that's inevitably where your kind of questions are going to come to life. No matter what yeah. you try and do beforehand, that's when things are just going to come out of the woodwork or people are going to suddenly say, you know, although I was trained on this, actually now I'm doing it, I've drawn a bit of a blank on what I should do. So, you know, it's really important, as, as you say, Adrian, that it's there for a couple of sort of cycles, basically. But I think the, the to watch for is that the danger is that that's what people often think isn't required because they just think you know once the system's in any support resources can just go because system's in job's done <laughs> off you go sort of thing so again it's another one that you might kind of have to fight for but it's really important because if you haven't got that support then you know who are you supposed yeah. to turn to i mean yeah stuck? 
yeah, if something does go wrong and it impacts uh, all your employees across the business, how are you going to cope? You you have to sort of think in those the, those types of terms. It's a little bit thinking about the worst case scenario for a short period of time and saying how am I going to manage those those uh, those, those problems? Yeah. Okay, uh, a couple more. We've got five, four, five, four or five minutes. So uh, William says, "Great presentation, thank you." Um, he says, "The start." He thinks says, "The start of the journey is key, but how do you?" best capture current state as mapping current processes is very difficult. Any top tips? Uh, well, I suppose my top tip would be uh, you've, you've got to involve the right people. So, you know, you need to involve the people who are doing it uh, day in, day out. And that can be, you know, again, I think based on the first question, when you're talking about everyone's sort of trying to do their day job and everything, actually, it could be somebody sitting alongside and just trying to actually kind of yeah. map what's being done if you can't afford to take time out. But in an ideal world, you would just try and take everybody out for just, you know, it might be that you have to just take everyone out for an hour here, an hour there, because you can't afford to take everyone out of the team for kind of, you know, a day sort of thing. But trying to just get everyone out and take a little bit of a step back and you know, you might need to prompt people a little bit to ask some questions on. So, you know, what's the first thing you do then? And someone might jump to, oh, well, I just, you know, enter that into the system. But then it's like, well, where do you get that information from that you're going to enter into the system? And you just want to try and draw out from people what they do. And, and you might do that on a, you know, you might ca capture that in a PowerPoint. You might capture that on, you know, some brown paper and post-it notes on the wall, however you're going to do it, the important thing is you're just capturing those steps that people do today to ultimately get them through that, you know, that payroll cycle. And as I say, just involving the people who are doing it, that's the, that's the key thing. You want, you want to involve, you know, you want to involve everybody as well so that everybody's got the opportunity to input into it. And especially because of that issues part as well, by involving them, it starts to draw out all those different issues. Okay, another couple of quick ones. Uh, Jackson says, I'm going to replace my payroll system because the current one is going out of support. So the vision led piece doesn't really seem relevant to me. Yeah, uh, I. It's it's interesting that we uh, we've we, we've 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 had a, quite a lot of ticks on the on the vision piece. I would say it, it, it's an op the remember that you've got an opportunity in terms of changing your payroll your payroll system doesn't come around very often. Make the most of that opportunity yeah. uh, to to drive what you what you want, but also what your business wants in terms of the payroll going forward. So. Um, so thinking about where you're going, that vision is, uh, I think, a really important part of making that change. You don't have to spend huge amounts of time and effort to actually start thinking about that, but you you should you should be you should be presenting, I think, a a, 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 a the payroll implementation as a something for the future of the business, not to fix a problem today. Um, uh, and, I and it might drive your plan because your plan might say, right, well, OK, because of support, supporting the current system, whatever, it has to be implemented by this date. But it doesn't mean from a vision perspective that you can't still have a vision. And then as part of that plan, just think about once you've yes. implemented what you're going to do to actually drive that change. And coming back to the conversations that you have with 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 potential suppliers is is that, that there's an implementation phase and then there's a. An, an evolution phase potentially after that and we have worked with clients where actually you've got the pay got the payroll in and then right let's start let's start looking at doing x y and z which can often uh, involve further change internally but actually drives as i say gets you going to a to a vision of of, of the, how you want the business to work and operate that uh, that is far better than today yeah okay uh, we nearly hit the hour, so final question, 20 second answer if you can, and this is one we've heard loads before, senior leadership don't see the need for change management, how do we convince them? Give them a vision. Well, and paint the picture of what would happen if you don't. Yes. Because I think uh, Adrian, you've yeah. alluded to it, that actually, you know, everyone's, everyone has to be paid and people seem understandably moan when they're paid incorrectly. So if they don't invest correctly and they don't think about reading their business for the change, then they're going to have problems further down the line. 
Perfect. Okay, so we've hit the hour. So on behalf of everyone, I'm going to say thank you, Simon. Thank you, Adrian. Um, we will send around uh, the recording, the slides, and details of uh, upcoming events from I Realize. And thank you from me to everyone for attending today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Yes, thanks. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a good rest of the day.